All right, so we're almost there. We now know that step one is to make sure your render settings reflect exactly how you want your project to be output. Step two is to indicate in the timeline which portion of the video you want to export. So by default, the render selects the entire timeline, but otherwise you could also navigate with your mouse or with your arrow keys and drop some in and out points using the I and O shortcuts. Likewise, you can right click on a clip and choose to render just this clip. And that will automatically place in and out points around it on the timeline. As well as indicating the range, you can continue to activate or deactivate your video and audio tracks like you might on the edit page. Or additionally, you can go to the color page and filter your selection and only export those clips. So in my case, I might only want to export clips that I have graded. In which case, back on the Deliver page, my option now says All Filtered Clips. Once my selection is done, and I know exactly where these clips are going, I'm going to add them to the render queue. The job is listed at the top, and I can continue making more changes. So for example, I could go back to my color page and turn off the filter, and now add the entire timeline. I might also want to go back and change my resolution and export a much smaller, much lighter version of the video, perhaps small enough to email to people in order to get approval on a certain edit point. So at this point, I've already listed three jobs. You can remove jobs by clicking on the X in the top right corner or by using the drop down menu in the top right and clearing all. If you realize you've created a job, but you've made a mistake or you've left out a vital setting, you can always edit a job by clicking on the pencil in the corner, making the appropriate change, and then clicking on the pencil again. This will prompt you to save your change or discard it. And finally, you've also got the option of sending the jobs to remote rendering workstations, which you would have had to have set up previously. Once your render queue is set up, you can click on Start Render and go take a nice long break. At the end of the render, my jobs tell me how they fared. Job 2 was completed in 24 seconds and was sent to my Documents folder, but Job 1 failed. When I told it to render, it told me that the rendering path already existed, and that's true, I had only generated one custom name and that applied it to both. So ideally, I'd want to edit this job, type in the new name, and save the change. Now, if I was to start the render, the job will be completed. Once you're done with the render queue, you can clear it out. You can use the options menu to show additional job details, including the resolutions in the codex, and you can choose to clear out all your rendered jobs so you can focus on the ones that you haven't rendered or that have failed for some reason. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.